hurts that over the last 20 years are still going through pain and suffering because of the loss of loved ones on 9-11. Lord, use each one of us sitting here in a very special way to bring the gospel to a dying world and a dying country. Lord, help us to be the representatives of Jesus Christ. And Lord, help us to do our very best to let people know who Jesus Christ is and what he's done for them. Father, we are so grateful for your presence and we pray especially for those in need. We pray for Donald Anderson that you would especially be with him this week. We pray for Cynthia Wetmore as she recovers. We pray for Rick Roth as he has hip replacement that you'd be with him. We pray for Ruth Locklear that you would touch her and be with her. We pray for Cheryl and the loss of her husband that you would comfort her. We pray for Laura, a friend of Lois's, that you'd be with that little one. We thank you for being with Carol in these days, Father. We pray that you'd be with Frank and clear his infection in his bones. We pray for Harry, that you too would touch him and heal him physically and spiritually. And so, Father, we give you all the thanks and all the praise for who you are and what you've done for us. And Lord, we just say thank you, for it's in Christ's name that we pray, and his people said, amen. Amen. Hearts of hope seem hard to find these days as darker deeds have their turn on the center stage we watch it all unfolding scene by scene and a happy ending seems a faded dream fear and desperation their day, at least until faith steps up to say, I believe though God is out of sight, he's working in the middle of all peace. Evil may have its time in the spotlight. Evil may have its time in the 
We do welcome you to the service today. Um, your attendance is a little lower here because I was I was shocked. We had 44 people at the first service. I would have been happy with more than three. Um, hopefully 20, um, but um, it was a nice full crowd. They sang and um, so, and I do want to remind you each week there'll be the first service printed and you'll be the second service printed. So. Just go to your service because uh, they do less singing, don't have the choir, uh, because we, we're being pretty precise as at our service as opposed to this one being a, a little longer. And then if God sends spontaneous revival, we'll just meet for days and days and days and uh, you'll never go home. Um, but anyway, so, so we do welcome you at this service and hopefully you'll get used to the schedule. I'll go over it in a minute. Um, but while we're here, you want to know each other, don't you? So let's stand and greet each other as we sing. And I love you with the love of the Lord. With the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King. And I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Everyone, and I love you with the love, Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen, amen. We ask that you sign the Ritual of Christian Friendship, the pad that the ushers have distributed at this time uh, to let us know that you are most certainly worshiping with us today. The flowers on the platform today are given to the glory of God and honor Ken and Joe Ridge on the occasion of their 40th wedding anniversary. So we uh, wish them a anniversary. Uh, um, we started our kickoff a weekend and week uh, last uh, yesterday, um, you know, we usually do the 24 hour prayer vigil, but we didn't know what to do this year with the health situations. And of course, especially with uh, the 20th year of 9 11 being the day that we would have the 24 hour prayer vigil. So we decided to do prayer time from 8 in the morning to 8 at night last night, and you could come as you feel led. And um, if you didn't make it, on the table is a, the list of all the prayer concerns that people submitted, and these were the last minute ones, so they sort of go hand in hand um, with the prayer thing. So you're certainly welcome to, uh, to pick them up and um, take them home, and if you didn't get to pray for them yesterday, you might wanna pray for them um, then any time during the week or, or whenever, um, let the needs be known. Um, and so we did especially set up our platform. We left it this way as we recognized um, those sites that were attacked by terrorists 20 years ago. And uh, of course our own church and uh, just being real burdened. The, this holiday was a little more difficult with the Afghanistan things starting at the same time. And, and so we want to continue to to pray for our situations 
and, uh, and go from there. Obviously, that God would move in a powerful way uh, using us. So uh, we trust that you continue to remember those who died 20 years ago. I thought it was interesting to note they said on the news that um, we lost about 3,000 people one day, but in the last 20 years from diseases and health conditions caused by 9-11, we've lost over 4,000 people. So it didn't just the 3,000 that gave their lives. Um, so anyway, we want you to continue to be praying. Um, but we did start off then yesterday uh, with prayer time, and then let me walk through the schedule as we're picking up. Then you know today um, we had our 8.30 service, and during 8.30 service is Sunday school for all ages. So we hope if you have any children or grandchildren, you, you can come to worship and bring them to Sunday school if you like to do that. And there's also an adult class uh, that Hal Roberts is uh, guiding us through, and that's uh, the study got forward uh, by Dr. David Jeremiah. So if you would like to come to adult Sunday school class, that meets 8.30 to 9.30, and you can, of course, be part of that study. And, uh, it's always a good study by uh, Dr. Jeremiah. So that's during the first service. Then at 9.30 to 10.15, we have a fellowship time in the kitchen, the dining room, and they have donuts, coffee, bagels, juice, Danish, and uh, you can purchase any of that at a minimal cost and fellowship for 45 minutes, especially if you go to adult Sunday school there. And then, of course, our 1030 service here. Um, I keep looking up at the clock. I was faithful one hour at the last service. Now I'm thinking I only have 22 minutes left um, because uh, this pushes us a little later till 12. So I'm really a little messed up today, but you'll just bear with me, right? So um, then I want to remind you that on Tuesday, our men's prayer and Bible study at the Langhorn Speedway Diner um, it's not meeting at the diner for a few weeks. It's just on Zoom. So if you're part of that study, uh, you have to Zoom. If you have any I, questions or problems with Zoom, uh, talk to George Brown or Andy, and they will help walk you through that. So that's uh, Tuesday mornings. And then Tuesday morning at 9.30, that's 7 a.m., um, Marge McCarty is leading a study. Now, this is a unique study um, it goes the whole school year. So if you're, what's that? With breaks, yeah. I mean, there's Thanksgiving break, Christmas break, Easter break. It's like 26 sessions. Um, but most Christians are only used to going to three to four sessions, and then they drop out. That's the tradition. Um, but so we want you to sign up. Um, she was excited about this study for a while preparing because it's the book of Revelation. So, and some studies, the book, the Bible book, you just can't do it in a nine, nine session thing. So, and they're going to be meeting in the dining room, so you can spread out a little bit if you, you need to spread out, as opposed to, of course, uh, the music room. So please note that that's on um, Tuesdays at 9.30, begins this week. Wednesday then, we have our family night um, program, and we begin from 5 to 6.15 with dinner. Um, now, we decided uh, from now until the Thanksgiving break, we, we made a menu. Do you know why we made this menu? Because we get tired of your calls that day saying, what are we having for dinner? I mean, what do you want for $5.75, you know? So the first one is my favorite meal. That's why we're having it. Um, it's a full turkey dinner. And uh, like I say, the cost is very minimal, five seventy-five. dollars Children, uh, $3.50, and then two and under free. And there's a cap on a family. So you can come anytime from 5 o'clock on, eat for an hour and 15 minutes straight, eat as much as you want. And let me tell you, the price is reasonable because you know how we always sort of over the years have made fun of McDonald's and the cheap combo meal? Go to McDonald's. 
I haven't found a combo meal under $8 yet. It's, it's unbelievable. You might get $7.75, but uh, you can't beat the deal. So we eat, and then we split into youth groups. We have nursery care, and then we go into worship at 6.30. Um, and then I'm doing a study on, a Bible study on, what are you afraid of? And taking six topics over the nine weeks, and we're talking about things that cause us great fear and how we can deal with it biblically. Um, fears such as some of the topics, disease, dying, being alone someday, um, depression. So we're gonna have a different topic each Wednesday night. I'll give you a syllabus, uh, but we start this Wednesday. So that's our, our family night programs. Of course, Thursday choir just started up last week. So if you'd like to be part of the choir, we'd like to have you do that. And then next Friday, um, we have some of our youth groups are doing some activities. And we ask that uh, youth groups, you sign up um, on the bulletin board so that we know, know you're coming. Um, we have some more volunteers that we need. Um, and so we hope that you'll look at this list and uh, decide to plug in in some way. And the rest of this insert explains everything I've uh, just mentioned to you. The one thing we've also done is um, uh, we've done a new card that has our services on it. So we put it in the bulletin and we have more out front. You can always take these, hand them to neighbors and friends. We also have footballs uh, that are left. We bought extra. So, you know, drive by your neighborhood and start throwing footballs at people's houses. Uh, they'll pick them up and say, oh, this is great. I'm going to go to New Life Christian Church. Anyway, and uh, if you like some fans, you can also uh, take them. Well, what do you think? Do you think, I think we covered everything? We want you to plug in. It's fall. I don't know when fall officially starts. It's got to be soon, I would guess. But we want you to plug in and get involved and do as much as you possibly can. If you have any needs, we've been pretty good at New Life at keeping the church open the last 18 months and hopefully ministering to you effectively. And uh, we just want to continue to do that. And so uh, you just let us know if you do have any needs. I think we covered it. What do you think? Okay. This time you have the privilege of presenting unto the Heavenly Father his tithes and your offerings. Father, thank you for the joy of giving, and we pray now that you bless these tithes and offerings, that they may be used to further the kingdom of Jesus Christ on this earth. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen.
God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creature here below. see the clouds rolling I can feel the winds they try to shake me I will not be moved my feet are on the rock I can see the waters rise I can hear the howling lies that haunt me fear won't hold me down my feet are on the rock When I feel my hope about to break I will cling to your unchanging grace Let the waters come and the earth give way I'll be dancing in the rain My feet are on the rock My feet are on the rock I can see the morning light I can feel the joy on the horizon Here my faith is found I stand on solid ground When I feel my hope about to break I will cling to your unchanging grace Let the waters come and the earth give to break I will cling to your unchanging grace let the waters come and the earth give way I'll be dancing in the rain my feet are on the rock my feet are on the rock On Christ the solid rock I stand All of the ground is sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands Our feet are on the rock On Christ the solid rock I stand All of the ground is sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands Our feet are on the rock On Christ the solid rock I stand All of the ground is sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands Our feet are on the rock when I feel my hope about to break, I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. When I feel my hope about to break, I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. My feet are on the rock. My feet are on the rock. My feet are on the rock.
Amen. Amen. Good. Very good. That was really very good to welcome them back. With uh, They did a great job welcoming yourself back. <laughs> well, this is kickoff uh, week for us here at New Life. And here we are uh, again. And uh, um, we're back after... 18 months of this plague. I don't call it a virus. I think it's a plague. Um, and since we were interrupted our lives with the plague um, 18 months ago, um, life's not the same, is it? Don't you just hate it, some of it? You know, wear a mask, don't wear a mask. We're going to get another disease. We're going to get another this and do this and do that. It's Life's just not the same the last 18 months. Do you think it'll ever get better? But then we look back uh, 20 years ago, yesterday, um, you know, two hours and 30-some um, minutes, um, four airplanes, you know, they go to the towers, they go to Pentagon, they go to Shanksville, and um, life is not the same. Since things happened 20 years ago, hasn't your life changed radically? Try to fly somewhere, try to go somewhere. Life's not the same. Do you think it'll ever get better? Um, how about middle of August, August 15th to August 31st of last month, and um, the, the disastrous way uh, the pullout was handled in Afghanistan, in my political opinion. Um, is our life ever going to be the same since that? It was real hard yesterday. Um, seeing uh, the TV and seeing the towers were taken down and the Pentagon and all that destroyed um, by terrorists and to know that the American embassy in Afghanistan is now flying the Taliban flag. That's really hard for me to take. I don't know about you, but I started thinking life's not the same. Life keeps changing and changing and changing. And it seems that it's not the way it used to be. Some of us have gone through illness. We've gone through death, especially during this pandemic. We've had families divided. Do you have families that are fighting each other, the mask and non-maskers, vaccine and non-vacciners? Sure you do. How about finances causing a problem, grief causing a problem, pain causing a problem? We're, it seems like we're going through such a rough time lately that I keep thinking, life's not the same. Will, will it ever get better again? Will it ever get better? I was born in 52, so I grew up in the 50s and the 60s, sort of. and. Um, I think I was really blessed because I think I grew up in a great time in this country. You know, there's just something about it. The, the, we're just grand times. And now we've come along and come along where we're afraid to do this, we're afraid to do that. Our, our kids are struggling with drugs, alcohol, and sex in elementary school where they should be playing with Barbie, Ken, and G.I. Joe as far as I'm concerned. But they're having to make major decisions as if they're really a boy or a girl or what really sex they are um, biologically. It's ridiculous stuff. Life is not the same. And I keep saying to myself, well, God, will it ever get better? Will we get back to where we were when we came to church with smiles and we came, got up in the morning and we were thankful for our jobs and thankful for our families. Will it ever ha get back to that? I don't know. 
I'm not a great history buff, but if you read history, you'll find out that between nations and empires and republics, and I'm not saying every, this is the average, most nations that have been democracies and tr strove for that last between 200 to 250 years. Now, there's always exceptions. So, um, so suppose we stretch it to 300 years. Um, America is 244 years old, and I think we're getting on borrowed time with the way this country is going. You know, when a nation or empire starts to fall, I was doing some reading, you have trouble getting water, you have trouble getting electric, you have trouble getting food, you have trouble getting gas, the banks close, and the economy falls. You know, we're right now living in a nation where to be a criminal is glorified and to be a good person is you're the evil one. We're living in a nation where, I know I've gone out to California in the last few years, uh, the farmers are starving with drought because uh, we're trying to save some kind of guppy that's swimming in the stream and it's stopping the farmers from getting, you know. We'll save the guppy. We'll uh, save the whales. Yet we'll kill the babies in the womb. I don't, I don't understand it. We're living in a nation where some of the people with the highest political leadership have the least, in my opinion, bit of good character. We're living in a nation marked with moral regression, sexual revolution, and spiritual rebellion. Is it going to change? Is life going to get better? We're living in a nation where the biggest problem is in inflation, interest rates, budget deficits, price of gas, or crime. Our, the biggest problem is sin. <laughs> you know, we're living in a nation where the greatest enemy isn't Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Taliban, North Korea, Cuba, Russia. Our greatest enemy is Satan trying to destroy the nation that was founded with Judeo-Christian beliefs under God. <laughs> I, oh, I don't know where we're going. I've been a little depressed seeing the things. I think Afghanistan triggered me. And um, I don't know if there's hope. So I had to start thinking, well, what is hope? Looked up, hope is an assured expectation. Hope is a belief that something beneficial is to come yet down the road. Hope is what God, for us as Christians, says that God does have a future plan for us. It's a little different than a wish, you know. I wish a lot of things. Every time that lottery is high, I'm talking high, high, I'll play it. And you know what I'm wishing for? I'm not wishing for one of y'all to win. I would be satisfied with that if you were a tither. But, you know, I'm wishing, you know, I'm giving the church this and I'm doing this and I'm, you know, and I don't need all this money, you know. I'm wishing, I, you know. I can wish a lot of things, I could, um, and we do wish. But hope's a little different. Hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised to us and his strength and his faithfulness to bring it about. Hope. Hope is the confident expectation regarding the unseen and the future, but it's based on prior fact and history that we've seen. Um, 
hope is um, for the Christian that God will continue to do what he's been doing for us. Hope is that God will completely, successfully do the work that he started in us, Philippians 1.6. Hope is that God will continue to keep all his promises that he's done in the past. Hope is that Christ will come again as he promised he would. And when we have that hope, that changes our lives. Let me tell you, if we just base our lives on the events, just say let's take 20 years, because that's what we've been talking about in the news and everything. It's like really bad. I don't care what anybody says. And I didn't come here today to depress you because I'm going to tell you how you can not be down about this situation. So, to get through life, I want to tell you how to do that. I'm not going to charge you much. I'm just going to tell you how you can successfully get through this life, okay? So to do that, we need to build our hope in God. God is the answer to all the problems that we're going through. You know, it isn't Washington. It's not the answer. I don't think the Congress is the answer. I don't think the Constitution is the answer. I don't think the Republicans are the answer or the Democrats or any such thing. God is the answer to our problems here. And let me tell you, if we build our hope in God, we can help solve all these problems. So I'm going to give you five ways to build your hope. You ready? You look so happy today. Uh, you look like pooped. Now, like, get with it a little bit here, okay? I'm doing this twice now. Of course, this should be better than last one because it's like I had practice. How to build your hope in God. Number one, we have to shift our focus and seek God's heart in our living. We have to shift our focus. You know, many of us um, center our lives on the problems of the world. Do you ever get up and immediately think of all the problems that lay ahead of you for the day? Do you ever get up and think the first problem is you have to get up? You know, don't you ever get tired of getting up? You know, let me tell you, I, you know, I have this routine I've told you about before. You know, I shave, and then I sit down in the chair, and then I wash my face off first, clean my teeth, then I go back to the recliner, and then, uh, you know, half the time I wake up and the electric razor I find in the recliner because I'm shaving and I go right out again, and then you have to do this whole teeth, and then the shower thing, then you have to make yourself look as handsome as this or as beautiful as you are. And uh, then you, that starts the day. Then you have to go to work. And, and so, so many people and so many of us focus on the problems. Oh, you know, do, you ever, do you ever say, I dread tomorrow? I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. Am I the only one that says those things? I have to get up. I'm going through grief. I don't want to get up. I don't want to do this alone. I just don't want to do it. We have to start focusing on the heart of God. Cast our cares upon him and trust him and draw closer to him. The key is drawing closer to him if you want to build your hope in God to get us through these problems. Drawing closer to him. We have to... We just have to do that. We have to do that. Instead of saying, um, I can't believe I have to get up now and go do what I have to do. Maybe we ought to say, well, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I am thrilled to get up. I'm alive. I'm a well. God has a task for me to do, and I'm going to go do it. Amen. That's really what it's about. Now, like I say, don't ask me if I say that every morning, but... That's what it's about. We have to shift our focus on the negative, and we have to seek God's heart if we want our faith, hope to grow. The second thing we have to do, 
1 Thessalonians 5, 17, you know what that is. We need to be constantly praying. We just need to pray constantly. And the one good thing about prayer is you can do it spontaneously and just pray. You can be at a red light. You can be driving. You can be in the bathroom. You can be in the kitchen. And just we need to constantly pray because prayer strengthens us. It provides us with direction. It helps us build character. If we want to have a strong hope and trust in God, we have to be people of prayer. That's all there is. That's all there is. So we're shifting our focus. We're being people of prayer, number three. We need to recall what God has done in the past in our lives. You know, it's really easy to forget the miracles we've seen in the past. It's really easy because we're having a rough time in the present. You know, you're having a rough time and you forget the good things God has done for you, don't you? you we, we tend to do that, you know. God has done many, many miracles in many of our lives, and we forget. You can't forget. You can't forget. You know, I didn't. I was blessed by not having children. Some of you have children, which, uh, and you're still living and surviving through this. Um, but did you ever? your child ever wants something from you or wants something done and you were against it and uh, um, they s said something to you like this, oh, I never get anything or you never do that for me or why can't I have that or what, you know. And is it your response sometimes, don't you remember when we took you to Disney World for six months? Don't you remember when we air conditioned your bedroom when nobody else had air conditioning because it had broken? Don't you remember when maybe God looks down on us sometimes and says, Norm, I know you want this. I know you want it now, but do you remember when I did this? Do you remember when you were in intensive care and I pulled you out of it? Norm, do you remember when I helped your family through different problems? If you want your hope in God to grow, to get us through these awful times, you have to, number three, recall what God has done in the past. You have to shift your focus. You have to constantly be in prayer. You have to recall what God has done in the past. And then you have to be patient in God's waiting room. Romans 8, 24 and 25. You got to be patient. That's not one of my qualities. It, once again, you've got to be patient. God, I want you to do this. And usually my prayers always end with now. God, I want you to do this now. Get me through this problem. When? Now. God, I really need you to work in this situation. When? Sometimes I even go yesterday. You know, God, I need your help now. Now. We've got to be patient in our Christian walk. We talk with God. We chat with him. We recall the things he's done in the past. We're in constant prayer. But remember, you may want something, and it may be for someone else even, but you still have to be patient because God is working everything out in his plan. And number five, to build your hope in God, expect the unexpected. You know, don't say, oh, God, I want you to do this, but <laughs> I know you're not going to do it. God, I want you to do this, but I know you're not going to do it. No, we have to expect the unexpected. We have to look for the miracles that God's going to send us. And we have to be thrilled about it. If we want to get through these difficult times, 
It's our hope in God. And our hope comes based on the fact that God loved us when we were sinners and sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us and his spirit dwells within our lives as Christians. Oh my gosh, what more could we ask for? But you know, so often we're like, woe is me Christians, woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. We sort of have to change that. We have to change it. And I'm preaching to you, but let me tell you, it goes to me just as much. To complain about something, I have very little patience, and I just have to keep working on it. And don't you think it should get easier as the years go on? Come on. Some of us, have, I've been a Christian since I was 10th grade. I'll be 70. You think it would get better? Do you think it would be easier? You think I've had enough practice? <laughs> no, because the devil likes to step in and destroy any good thing I'm trying to build with my father and with his son. And so one of the areas that he attacks is my spiritual life. And then when my hope starts to go in God, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Um, story of two older ladies. They both happen to have strokes. And so they went in a convalescent center. The one lady, her stroke was on the right side. And she was paralyzed. The other lady, Ruth, her stroke was on the left side and she was paralyzed. The funny thing was that one of the things they did, they were both superb pianists. And now they had strokes. And they lived their lives for a while, no hope, all their joy was gone. And then the therapist one day got them in a room, sat them both down on a piano bench. Right hand, left hand of the other. And they made great music together became great friends. He can't ever give up hope. Do we want to give up hope for America? No. We pray and we strive. Do we want to give up hope for our political leaders? I'm a little hard on that one. But no. I was sitting in here yesterday praying for our government. I was like, oh God, help me. We can't give up hope. Because I also don't want our country to collapse in the average times that democratic uh, countries and republics usually collapse. <laughs> it was a story years ago of this boy and he was burned in a fire pretty bad, and so he couldn't come to school for a few years. So the school would send a teacher to those that couldn't come to school so they wouldn't get far behind in their work. So um, the teacher was called in, given Johnny's address, met with the school nurse, and found out what was wrong with Johnny. She got to Johnny's home, and it was horrible. The burns on his body, he was depressed, he didn't really want to do anything. Little Johnny didn't care about anything. So the teacher worked with him on his nouns, verbs, and adverbs. And she left so discouraged, thinking, I didn't help this little boy at all. This is horrible. So a couple weeks went on, and the school followed up, and the nurse followed up, and Johnny was miraculously a change boy. So they called the, the teacher in and said, what did you do? You went to his house and ever since you've been to his house, little Johnny is just, just changed. He's working, he's striving, he's changed. And so they finally went and talked to little Johnny and Johnny said, well, I was real down. But he said, then I thought, you wouldn't send a teacher 
to work on nouns and adverbs to a dying boy. And he suddenly had hope that he would live. Hope, hope. We lose hope, but we have nothing left. Man approached a little league baseball game afternoon. He saw the boy in the dugout. He saw what the score was. The boy responded when he asked the boy, what's the score? The little boy said, 18 to nothing, we're behind. And the spectator said, aren't you discouraged? You know, you're behind 18 to nothing? The little boy said, sir, why should I be discouraged? We haven't even gotten up to bat yet. Maybe some days you feel like you haven't gotten up to bat. I just want to tell you today, there's a lot of things that you can look around and are horrible. Whether it be our government, our affairs overseas, our hostages, whether it's virus, another virus coming, maybe, China. There is so much that we could be down about and lose hope on. I'm here today to tell you one thing. You can't lose hope. You cannot lose hope. And you don't have to lose hope because you know why? God sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for your sins and give you life eternal. And when we've accepted Christ and his spirit and the Holy Spirit lives in our lives, that is the most wonderful bit of hope. And then we go from there. Yeah, you have to um, seek God's heart. You have to keep praying. You have to remember the things that God did for you before. You have to be patient and then start expecting miracles. But stop, we've got to stop. I'm preaching to myself. Being woe as me, woe as me, Christians. We've got to be Christians that have the hope of the world. Because we do. We do. And uh, that's how we're going to help Christianity. That's how we're going to help America. That's how we're going to help our daily situations. We've got to do the best we can and when you have hope it will light your darkness it will increase your faith it will be contagious when you have hope you'll have what it needs so pray for our country let's pray for those in danger let's pray for our, our faith in Christianity in America let's pray for each other Let's be a people of hope, and God will hear, and God will answer our prayers. Amen, and amen, and amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found. Chestnuts alone fall, blessed to stand before his throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground 
is sinking sand. Woe is me is over with, right? Amen? Amen? What's important is that your feet are on the rock. And we're getting closer to him. And uh, that will help our land, ourselves, our families. We got to do it. We've got to do it. Now, do I see a smile? You all really didn't look very friendly today. I don't know, you know. I hope that will change a little bit next week, won't it? Either that or I will require a mask of everybody just because I want to see your frown. Go, go with the blessing of God. Amen. <laughs>